We're in Vancouver with Peter Espick, CEO of Nikola Mining. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much for coming. Of course. You recently had a news release regarding the old Craig Mount. Can you tell us about that? One of the things we wanted to highlight in the news release is the fact that it is the old Craigmont because we had previously often referred to as the copper asset as dual copper. And what we were finding out from investors and people who were asking questions is that uh, w by calling it previously Thule Copper, there was a misconnection between Thule Copper and Craigmont. They didn't know they were the same thing. And just to give you a little bit of background, C the Craigmont mine, the historic Craigmont mine, was the highest grade or is the highest grade copper mine in the history of North America. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to kind of talk about that this, yeah, it's a, it's a new exploration project that we're doing. But it's at an old um, uh, site that is proven to be mineralized. And so we kind of taught, wanted to explain to the market that New Craigmont is the historic Craigmont site. Okay. So Nuclear Mining recently had a $2 million flow through financing. Could you tell us where that proceed is going to be used? There's probably um, four areas of, of key interest to, to Nikola right now. And, and obviously the copper is... The value of the company, you know, we do have operations and we do have uh, Treasure Mountain, but the value and the upside of the of the blue sky is, is is the copper asset. So, the funding, the funds that we receive, the two million, will be allocated to a. We'll continue drilling on the embayment, in, and the embayment is actually divided into two sections. Mm -hmm. There's a north and south zone. We've just started. We've just commenced drilling on the south zone now. Um, the a key area of interest that, uh, or a key target is what's called the Promontory Hill. And the Promontory Hill is, interestingly, the Craigmont mine was founded because of outcroppings that were mined on the Promontory Hill. Mm -hmm. And that was back in the 18, uh, late 1800s. And uh, our IP survey came back uh, with a very, very strong reading that um, has really encouraged us to to go ahead and, and uh, explore that site. And, th and there's never been a, a diamond drill hole put into the Promontory Hill. The third area that we um, really want to uh, focus on going forward in is what's called the MARB zone as well. And the MARB zone is something that all our geologists really like. And that's what you have is you have its surface outcropping. And at surface, you can see a 50 meter wide band grading um, you know, 0.7% to 1%. And so it's just understanding what's there. And we'll, we'll work on that this year. And the other thing is is actually the historic pit. Mm -hmm. And and what you've seen at at New, uh, New Gold, which is the historic Afton mine, is what they did is they took a pit and they expanded the pit, the historic pit, and um, because they found that there was material below it and to the sides. Because, you know, as you do a pit, you, you kind of, go like this and you make it more narrow and mm -hmm. the way block cave mining works is that you just cave it in and you just have these sheer walls and so what we know about there's two things we know about the historic uh, pit location one is that uh, there's a halo surrounding the entire area that mm -hmm. would be approximately 0.5 mm -hmm. percent and and the historic cutoff grade was 0.7 so anything below 0.7 they didn't even start and and so we would like to drill up the historic waste piles there's 80 to 90 million tons of waste piles around the historic pit. We will start RC drilling uh, either end of Q1 or beginning of Q2 mm -hmm. of this year. And, uh, and then we would like to spend more time drilling ar around the pit to see how much uh, material was left there from the historic mine. Great. So just for better understanding, could you elaborate on what exactly an embayment zone is? So the embayment zone that's a, that's a very good question, but mm -hmm. the embayment zone, the, the historic Craigmont pit is a scarn, and mm -hmm. the scarn means that the fluids flowed in from somewhere else, from some porphyry system. Mm -hmm. And what was also known about this scarn is that there's a fault by the historic Craigmont pit and the underground that basically cut the mineralization in half. Or not in half, but it, it sheared the mineralization. Mm -hmm. And we know based on, because we are neighbor to Highland Valley Copper, we know that that, sh that fault shifted it northwards. Mm -hmm. And so what really what the embayment zone is, 
It's the continued mineralization of the historic pit. Could you please elaborate more on the waste piles? Uh, they're a very important target because, A, it's already been mined. And mm -hmm. 50% of the cost, if you think of mining, 50% of the cost of mining is the actual mining. Mm -hmm. And then you've got costs associated with transportation and costs associated with milling. Mm -hmm. Well, when you know that the historic cutoff grade was 0.7%, which would make it the highest grade copper, uh, pure copper mine in North America currently mm -hmm. in today's market, um, and if you calculate there, you understand that 50% of the costs associated with the production are no longer there, mm -hmm. it's a very exciting target because there's, as I mentioned earlier, there's 80 to 90 million tons of material there. So that's something that we're certainly going to drill uh, through RC drilling, mm -hmm. and that will also lead into the diamond drilling that we'll do below it. So they're, they're kind of, it's like a package. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about your current operations? On the milling partnerships, we have six contracts, and um, basically, the contracts are as such that the, the the miner pays for the mining costs, and, and then the trucking costs, and we pay for the milling costs, and and they're profit share agreements where we split the profit. And mm -hmm. so, we have one of our partners that uh, Gavin Mines that is going through the final uh, permitting approval and is expected to start operations in towards the end of March and we expect we're targeting to start receiving and milling and, and um, uh, processing the material in April and I think this year is, will be the first year and, and we were actually unfortunate because last year the forest fires mm -hmm. basically delayed everything eight months but once the mill starts it's going to continue. On the operational side we will have the, we expect the mill to be operating on the reclamation side, we have a contract with uh, Merritt Green Energy where they, they have a green energy plant where they burn mm -hmm. wood and mm -hmm. we receive the fly ash, and, which is a, essentially uh, carbon because it's burnt wood. And we blend that with our, the soil that we have on site. And we're actively, uh, we're actively receiving material from the local area and also from a little bit further to basically so that we can um, mitigate dust coming from our site. So what we'll do is we've got on one hand at, the, at our site, because it'll be a busy year this year, mm -hmm. we've got the operations of the mill and we'll have the reclamation activities and the reclamation activities will be directed towards getting rid of any d type of dust issue. Great. Now let's talk about your Treasury Mountain asset. Where is it located and what's the upside? Treasure Mountain is located 90 minutes from the Craigmont Mill site. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, the mill that we have at Craigmont was built to process material from Treasure Mountain. Mm -hmm. So Treasure Mountain received its permitting subject to the mill being at, at um, Craigmont. The, it's a silver target. It's a high-grade silver property. I'm, I think that there is significant exploration upside, and we have been approached by... Uh, two groups in the past month to look at uh, prospects of how to explore the silver side. It is a permitted silver mine mm -hmm. and there it, we have what's called level one stope two which is in the top level which is uh, a stope of 14,000, there's approximately 14,000 tons of material remaining. 70% of the costs associated with mining have been incurred mm -hmm. and the average grade is about 32 this is based on a 43101 mm -hmm. is 32 ounces per ton so the material is there we would look at extracting it but we would only do it if the co if the price of silver was greater than $20 an ounce US mm -hmm. a ton because at this point there's no sense in depleting your own resource uh, it we're in, it's better for us to wait until the silver prices go up and and revenues that would be generated from that would be utilized towards exploration on that site but from the flow through funds that we currently raise, they're going to be directed towards copper. So Peter, tell us, what do investors have to look forward to in 2018? The continued on uh, exploration on the embayment zone, diamond drilling, mm -hmm. uh, RC drilling on the waste piles, and diamond drilling around the historic pit. Our promontory, promontory hill is going to be a, a target that we're going to be drilling this year as well. And then also the MARB, which we expect to commence soil sampling conduct an IP survey and maybe do channel sampling this year. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time, Peter. Thank you very much for coming by.